Podcasts. And a new book published by Zondervan takes a different approach to telling the early life story of Christ. Take a look. Chip Brown, the senior vice president of Zondervan, here to talk about the graphic novel, Messiah Origin. If I use the term really fancy comic book, it might be overly simplistic, but in sure. a way, this book seems to use a lot of the concepts of a comic. Sure, sure. It is a graphic novel, which is, in a sense, a longer comic book in a very popular format that uh, it would, in publishing right now is a growing format. Have you always been a big fan of this particular type of format? I had comic books when I was a kid. I didn't really carry them into my adulthood. Uh, Most of us get past that. Right, but I, you know, I do enjoy a, an occasional superhero movie, and I think you know, people in general have a desire to, to live a supernatural life, and so uh, I've been fascinated by people's fascination with the supernatural. Well, and a lot of those superhero movies, my family and I just watched Man of Steel over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And it certainly has a lot of elements that it doesn't take much to tie it to a story of sure. Christianity. Sure, he's positioned as a savior, yeah. as it were. One person that's supposed to save mankind, so very much modeled after Christ. Well, I mean, the stories are, the story, I guess, highlights the life of Christ. He doesn't wear a cape, and um, he is a superman because he has, you know, superpowers, but this message is really resonating with a lot of people. Sure. I, I didn't know that graphic novels were so popular. Uh, you know, I think that they're sort of the stained glass for this century. I mean, it's a visual storytelling that just takes panels and unpacks scripture in a way that transcends language. You've started a program called Vital Shift. Right. Tell us about that. Uh, well, we have, um, in some ways, I think, uh, in entertainment, this next generation especially, um, people want to sort of discover their own things. They don't want it to be told to them from the corporation what's cool. And, uh, and so in some ways, uh, it's, it's the same trick Jesus used of this sort of secret society speaking in parables and, and that there are messages in here that are meant for only a certain number of people in the audience. And hmm. so the idea of vital shift is a double entendre that in publishing and in all media, really, there's a, a shift, a vital shift going on that if you don't recognize the change in formats, then, then you'll probably miss out. And just like um, Peter Drucker told us that the railroad industry thought it was the railroad industry rather than the transportation industry. And so it's just uh, a different a different format, if you will. But um, the double entendre, the sort of secret society thing, is that over the course of all humankind, there is a vital shift in, in history, which was the, the birth and the work on the cross that Christ did. And so this is the origin story of that vital shift, which is why it's the first title we're putting in that. Right? Well, I know you're not the writer, but how did you pull together this team um, and tell us about them? Well, uh, I sort of felt like we needed to understand the market and the audience first. And so uh, I guess two years ago, we went to Comic-Con and pretended like we had a title coming. <laughs> and uh, I did hire uh, somebody who does all the artwork for um, uh, Captain America. And uh, it was called Blood and Stone, which is going to be coming out in a year. And so we spent um, three Comic-Cons. There's one in the spring and the fall. And these are enormous, 125, 150,000 fanboys and fangirls. And, uh, and so had probably two or 3,000 conversations with individuals that um, save their money and, and blow it at Comic-Con to buy things and dress up, you know, to, to sort oh, yeah. of um, experience transformation of some sort on their own. Uh, and so that gave us the confidence that we thought we could make something that would work for that audience, but also be true to the, the text in scripture. Has that market that you, uh that you went into at Comic-Con, and I'd love to hear about your experience at Comic-Con, sure. because <laughs> it, it, 
if you're not familiar with this particular event, when Chip talks about people dressing up, oh, they go full <laughs> throttle, kids. And uh, what was it like to be there? And have you successfully tapped into that market? Uh, I think we have. I'll, I'll tell you a couple things. Um, a personal anecdote is I had a conversation with uh, a bat girl. So this was somebody who probably you know spent hundreds of dollars to perfect this costume, super uh, bright green contact lenses, a mask, you know, and and w I was talking about this title that will become Blood and Stone, which is the story of David, really David and Goliath. But that story we know from Sunday School ends on page two, and you got eighty-eight more pages, which is in the Bible, but people don't know that part, right? Because <laughs> they don't read it, uh, and so. After a little while, she took her mask off, and she said she was raised Southern Baptist, and she left the church, and you know, after when she went to college, and never came back. And it, it was a story I heard over and over and over again. And people weren't necessarily rejecting the Bible; they were they were rejecting some personal experience or, or whatever their excuse were, was. It was not the text of the Bible, and so um, I felt like we had an obligation, if not permission, to to try to interpret the text visually like the stained glass for this century. And, um, and has it worked? Well, we did last November, a year ago, we released the uh, Book of Revelation, which came to us when people, when Christians in that marketplace understood we wanted to go make these. That came to us. It was an app for us. The artwork was finished. And that sold in one month what we needed it to sell in a year. Wow. wow. So we know there's a, there's a market there. There's an uh, inherent thirst for the scripture and, and for uh, well-executed artistic vision. And then with this one, it just came out about two or three weeks ago. The, most of what has worked in terms of sales has been outside of the Christian market, which tells me there's a huge opportunity. If, if the church is shrinking and, and Christian booksellers' traffic is down, well, I will bet you that everybody shopping in the Christian marketplace is one degree of separation from one of these bat girls that left the church. Mm -hmm. And so here's an instrument that you can handle Bible, because they have, you know, in this country, we have seven, eight Bibles already in our house. Yeah. But if we're not reading them, it doesn't matter. And so we have, we have to deal really with apathy more so than, than illiteracy. Well, I'd be interested in knowing the demographics that was interesting, what you, that comment you just made. How old are these people? Um, sure. You know, how old is that girl? She was probably 24, okay. I'm guessing, uh, based on how many years she was out of college. And, um, we, we, you know, the target market, if you will, is 18 to 34, but I saw all ages at, at Comic-Con, for sure. More mm -hmm. so 18 and over. Mm -hmm. A few kids, but mostly 18 and over, but all the way up to 70. Uh, the people that were you know, interested in, in superheroes. And Comic-Con is also now a place, uh, it's morphed over the last uh, few decades. It's, it's a place where they debut big motion pictures and gaming platforms and things like that. So it is a giant uh, mess of humanity, uh, of, of really it just, um, it's almost like like Las Vegas. Like Las Vegas. It's a sure. you know fallen world and people trying to transform by being something that they're not in a costume. I imagine the the difficult part for a publisher like you is you're trying to balance because Zondervan has for years catered to the Christian bookstore, but this isn't necessarily the kind of book that Christian bookstores have sold over the years. How have they reacted to it? Uh, I think the, 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 the issue is there's a shortage of product, if you will, in the Christian marketplace. Mm -hmm. There's a shortage of product that, that is both this genre, graphic novels, and this subject matter. And so there are titles like uh, David C. Cook's Action Bible. That was more for younger people, but that has, I think that's maybe a half a million units sold. And so the, the issue with these is, is discoverability, is that where do they go in the store if there's no graphic novel section? And do they get buried spine out on a shelf with other Bibles that are you know, six times the width? And so I think that's really the issue is, is it's a leadership crisis really of if you're in some kind of uh, control of what gets merchandised or, or whether you're a mom or a store clerk, uh, these things need discoverability. We know they work because when, when they show up in a mass market situation, people buy them in droves. Mm -hmm. And so it's really just about uh, getting people to notice them, and if people buy them, we'll continue to make them. So my innate curiosity is, what's the next project after Messiah <laughs> Origin? Well, this is w the first in a series of seven. So this okay. is a Harmony of the Gospels, and it'll unpack over seven issues. Uh, we have seven different series, that uh, some of which we're talking about, some of which we're not so far. Um, but this is the first of seven. It's the same creative team from Book of Revelation, which has done very well. Uh, we have another one coming up this spring called um, Blood and Stone 
okay. which was with an artist from uh, Captain America. Um, and we're hiring a lot of TV writers for this because it's more like a directing job than a writing job. Sure. Because the, yeah. the script is written, yeah, if you will. Yeah, it's a storyboard, mm -hmm. basically. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, there's lots more coming. But as I said, we want people to support the one that's on the market today. And, and Christians, I think we, we, we're known by the next generation for complaining about things. And I, I, that's a gross oversimplification, <laughs> but there are entire books You're absolutely right. written about yeah. this, right? And people, our brand is that uh, people associate the brand of Christianity, people 30 and under, with what we're against rather than what we're for. Mm -hmm. So why not come out with an origin story that is the vital shift in history, right? And so when Christians vote with their wallets, uh, these things will happen. You know, you, you, it's the, the biggest... Rated television shows are football games. That's gladiator stuff, right? Mm -hmm. The biggest rated films are superhero stories. And if Christians don't vote with their wallet on Christian material that, that, that young people are taking an interest in, then well, then shame on us, right? So, Well, I know as a senior vice president, you're more used to signing checks than books, but I will have you sign this well. book <laughs> because we're going to connect with, tell you that to connect with Chip, Go to Zondervan.com or you can go to Harvest-TV.com and click on Show Info for a link to Messiah Origin. But once again, this is part of our Harvest giveaway, so the first person who emails in at live at .com, we're going to give you the autographed copy of the book and back with some closing thoughts on this edition of Harvest in just a moment.